Come on, talk to me. Sometime later. But something had to be happening all the time. You see, because if, if you got to join something, you got to join something to something. If you don't have nothing, you can't join nothing. And so in your Christian life, if you don't practice obedience, understanding will not come. Because there are certain points in your life where the thing begins to make some sense. And I say understanding means it is making sense. I didn't understand in 1985 when I left my job. I mean, I had a secure job. I mean, I was, I, I think, I would tell people, I was never even thinking about ministry. I was, I mean, I love God, but I wasn't thinking about ministry. The young man was thinking of career, you know. Listen, you dream. Eh? Most of us, we dream. And I had dreams. And God did not shatter my dreams. God just took me out of a dream in a certain direction. I was leading me in another direction. But I say to people, beloved, I never understood most of what God is doing until later on in my life. But I look back and said, I'm glad that I took the first step in obeying God. Amen. And just turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter 13. And I'll close with this. Matthew 13. You see, if you want to be strong, you have to hear God and obey Him. If you want to be stable, you got to hear God and obey. obey Him. If you want to stand the test of time, you got to hear God and obey Him. But if you want to go to the next level, if you want to go to the next level, it will take a whole lot more than obedience. And I know that may sound strange, but it's absolutely true. Here what the Bible says. Jesus gave a parable in Matthew 13. Matthew 13. 13, 1, 3. And he gave the parable of the sower and the seed. And he was saying, hey, some, this sower went out to sow. Some seed fell on the wayside, some fell among ferns, some fell on rocky ground, and some fell on good ground, good soil. Right? And when he was finished, his disciples came and said, Lord, why is it that you spoke in parables? And he was saying something. Jesus said something very interesting. He said, I spoke in parables so that, that they would not understand what you would understand. You see, Jesus was making a distinction between people who were following him and those who were not. Some people just heard the problem and that was the end of the story, but they never understood what he was saying. Do you know who the understanding came to? The understanding came to the disciples who were following Jesus. Yeah. What I'm saying to us, beloved, in the things of God, you have to cultivate the habit of obedience and following God and doing what God says. And at some point in time, God will bring understanding. Because understanding tells me that we are at the point of maturity. We can handle what God is actually going to do for us. See, a lot of people want to go to the next level. What are you going to do at the next level? You can't beat demons on level one. Level two got bigger demons, greater demons. How are you going to handle it? Oh, God, take me to You sure? You think God won't kill you? Everybody wants to, I mean, it's a new thing. It's a new fight around Christianity. Everybody wants to go to the next, but don't fail to understand that every level you go to got greater responsibility, got greater accountability, it got greater de de demands on you. It's not going to be easy. It's not retirement and then you go in Hawaii and then you go in Australia. And it's not that God doesn't retire anybody, He refire them. Amen. Right? And so Jesus, in giving the understanding of the parable, this is what he said. He said, verse 18, hear the words of the parable. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, the words of that kingdom, and does not understand. He didn't say he do, doesn't obey. Doesn't understand. If you don't remember anything else I say today, learn this. Obedience always comes before understanding. Amen. If you're going to be a child of understanding, you first have to be a child of 
obedience. You will never understand the heart of the Father except you first learn to obey the Father. You'll never understand the heart of God except you first learn to obey God. So obedience always comes before understanding. In Matthew 7, he says, those who hear the word and do them, they'll be strong. But now he's saying, those who hear the word and understand, so when well, you know the rest of the story, if you read to the, the, the last part, he says, some people get caught up with all kind of things, rocky soil, blah, 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 blah. Some sown among ferns. But verse 23 says, as for that which was sown in good soil is who? The one who hears the word, understands. And what happened? What follows? Fruitfulness. Abundance follows. That's the person who goes to the next level. Those who hear the word and understand it. So if you want to be fruitful, learn. First of all, just do what God said. Same as I close, I'm asking the question, what is God saying to you? What has God said to you? You know, sometimes it's sad and unfortunate that I've been a pastor, and I just say to people, pastor is bad name, bad name business. If God didn't call you to pastor it, don't get in. Stay out. <laughs> you know what's sad? Don't we have many people come to church and still struggle with tithing? Mm -hmm. Tithing is entry level Christianity. Mm -hmm. Tithing is Old Testament stuff. God don't want tithe. In our day, what God said in, in, in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore to present yourself. God wants you. God don't want a door in your house. God wants to be in charge of the whole house. God wants to direct your affairs. So if you're struggling with the basic things, the simple things, give it to God. You know, and so, I mean, the Bible says don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. The Bible says so. That's, entry, that's what we teach converts. Aren't you, Pastor? <laughs> but you got big people in the church 20 something years, you got to tell them to say this. <laughs> You got people coming to church for all of their life and still coming late to the house. People are like, oh, what or that happen? Are you understand that? Anybody gonna keep anybody in a job if you come late every day? No. Wow. Wow. And, and you know, we, we come, and, and <laughs> sorry, and some of we come, I'll prim before you come in easy. <laughs> Take your little car and sit on. <laughs> Want to make a grand entrance. <laughs> But you know, he says something that is bothering us. You see, our sense of value for God and the things of God is not equated with our sense of value for the things. We, we have more importance for a job. Can you tell yourself, you know, kind of for, listen, you can get fired tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You don't need a job. And I think Christians got to begin to understand. You don't need your job. Your job needs you. It's what you bring on your job that makes a difference. And if beloved, the devil chooses to take it away, the devil can take it, but God got something else and something better. I believe that. You know what I know that? I know by experience. When I was back and I left my job, I was leaving my job. I was giving me a fixed salary every month. And I was coming to no salary every month. That make no sense, right? But understanding comes in. I obeyed first, and what happened? So you work on it, man. If a person is earning a salary and can't pay the bills, I'm, just, I'm not saying I'm going to pay the bills, right? But if you're earning your salary and can't pay the bills, can you pay your bills if you don't have a salary? Logically, can you? Doesn't make sense. But trust me on this one. You see, when God is a source, mm -hmm. then you learn to live supernaturally. Amen. And I believe, beloved, the next Amen. level when we move from the place where we depend on our salaries to take care of our business, mm -hmm. to begin to trust God to work some miracles for us. I don't know how we're going to do it. Don't ask me how. I don't have the answer for the how. Mm -hmm. But I know that 
you can do it because that's the God that we have. Amen. But you will never experience that at that level except you learn to obey God with his simple things. Yeah. When God speaks to your heart about something, when God tells you, do this thing, you know, do it. You know, he says something, tell us something, don't talk. <laughs> something in your house start talking to you around the house. <laughs> It's God speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Love those little voices. Yes. God tests us in those little things. Because yes. the Bible said if you learn yes. to be faithful in what? Yes. In little things. Yes. What God going to do? Yes. God going to bring you big things. Yes. So my point is, if you don't learn to be faithful in level one, yes. when on earth you going to reach level two? Amen. You're going to die at level one. That's why most Christians, beloved, the only thing they, they're so excited about they going to heaven. Look at this, huh? That's why you live on earth. So what are you going to do between heaven and, and or between now and heaven? <laughs> Let's all stand together. Yeah. I want to ask a question. I'll just go on with the next level. I know everybody going to raise their hand. But I want to ask a question this way. How many of us are faithful in obedience at level one? Where you are right now, where you are right now, how faithful and committed you are to the things that God has been speaking to you about. You've been coming to church week after week. I'm sure God uses servant to speak to you. He's saying lots of stuff, whatever. How faithful are you in that level? Because the level of your faithfulness to that level will determine whether or not you can qualify. I know the thing is, is God has marked the exam paper. And even if your pastor promotes you, trust me, you're going to last too long. Because the only promotion that stands is when God promotes you. Amen. Amen. And even when you don't have a title to go along with it. And we call people get enamored by titles and all them kind of things. We love you to get all the titles in the world. The Bible says, do the work of the ministry. The Bible Amen. said, by the fruits you will know them. Amen. Not by the leaves. Jesus cursed the tree that had plenty leaves. And many Christians, we got enough leaves in love. Plenty talk. It's easy. Talk is cheap. Mm. Yes. Therefore, in plan, you could, you could talk unlimited for the whole month. <laughs> okay. That's cheap. God is not impressed by talk. Do I impress God? Don't talk to him. Just do what he says. He said to Abraham, now I know. No. I know you're my friend. It's power. It's power. I won't call you to the altar. I want you right where you are to make a conscious decision. Conscious. The Lord, if you've been failing in your obedience, just repent quick. Ask God to forgive you. Even if it's a small thing. Love it, God knows even the very number of hair in your head. It matters yes. to God. The small yes. things matter. Yes. The Bible said you got to watch the foxes yes. because it's the little foxes yes. that spoil the vine. Yes. Don't say, you know, that's a soul. You see, there's nothing small with God. Yes. Everything that God is asking and requiring of you is big with Him. Amen. It's significant. It's Amen. important with Him. Yes. You're not going to make important to yourself what is important to God. It must become a priority in your life, whatever is a priority to God. So whatever is God, whatever God is saying to you, that is important at that point in time to God. And Michael, you can help me see the song. You know, I want you to talk to God. See, we're not going to flip over here today. We are doing a lot of stuff. But let me tell you, what you do today can make a significant difference. Maybe the, day, the, the moment you step out of that door can make a difference. can make a difference how you confront that situation tomorrow. Make a difference. Make a difference, beloved, how you learn to handle the successes and victories that God is going to bring your way. To make a difference. And make a difference whether or not the next level that you so earnestly desire and pray, where are you going to get there? Got to be successful at another level, beloved. Requires as a prerequisite success at this level. I'm always coming before God, examining my life before God, and say, God help me. I've been in ministry for quite a number of years. When I'm still learning, God, there's so many things I don't even understand. 
only know you say God I want to obey you and if you think obedience is easy trust me the questions are more difficult the things that God asks sometimes are even greater things the last thing God asks me to do we love him big thing I'll say this to you as you sing Trudy knows 12 years ago God helped me to start a church and we grew from nothing we have a very beautiful building which is still to be complete so thank you pastor for that word quite a number of people church is doing a whole lot better church moved from giving me nothing to something you know what God asked me to do to give it up the average pastor looks at the church as a pension but God said give it up but if God said give up the church what should I do I say God if you ask for it it's all yours I don't want it I don't want anything in my life that God is asking our Sunday school teacher is telling us when the children of Israel went into Jericho God 